Hey, horror fans, welcome back to J vs. Horror and another episode of Hardcore Horror Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about a creepy, weird little film from 1990 called Singapore Sling. Known in some circles as Singapore Sling, the man who loved a corpse. Now, it's a 1990 Greek black and white horror underground art film directed by Nikos Nicolaitis and regarded as his magnum opus, considered a difficult film to label while still managing to develop something of a cult following throughout the years. Nonetheless, it was shot in a bizarre manner somewhat resembling film noir or neo-noir black comedy, uh, as well as the exploitation, thriller, and crime genres, mixed with some elements of eroticism and horror, with sex being used in this film as a power trip. Uh, very interesting little film. Like I said, shot in black and white. This director, uh, Nicolatis, shot films from the 1960s to the 1990s. Uh, and this is the only film he ever had that was released on DVD. So definitely worth maybe going to uh, look up Nikos Nicolatis. And maybe if you can find a copy of one of his films somewhere, uh, you might be interested in checking it out. If it's anything like this one, it's got to be interesting. So... The plot starts off, we see two mentally ill women digging a grave for one of their servants that they have murdered. And, you know, we slowly see how crazy they are, and trust me, it goes beyond <laughs> anything you've ever seen before. Uh, the film is shot kind of three different ways, and it's very fun the way they do it. There are some scenes in the movie that just come straight across as regular film narrative. They just, they just show it to you just like a scene. Then there are these little interview segments where we see, just like in the office, when you see them talking to the uh, workers in the break room and they're getting sound bites from them and stuff like that. Very similar. Uh, we'll have one of the characters sitting in a chair while classic piano music plays and they'll start to tell a story or give us background into some insight that they have about something. I mean, just weird little cutscenes in the film, right? And then there's another way it's done where it starts out as a regular scene in a film. And then the person who is in the scene will at some point uh, turn to the camera and start talking. Basically break the fourth wall and start act like we're there, like they're talking to us. What's interesting about this the most to me is that this happens even during their delusions. Because there's some of the things they show us that they, they cannot be real. I mean, they are beyond realistic. And there are some things that seem like they are real, like it's a somebody's telling you a real story. So... Yeah, it's it's done in a very interesting way. There's really only three characters in this movie you need to know about. Even though there are like some outside characters that are talked about. We have the mother, the daughter, and I believe that's what their character names are. And Singapore Sling. That's a character name. That's right. Um, so what happens is we see this, these two mentally ill women and they're burying this servant at the beginning in the garden outside in a... They are messed up, man. They they play these weird sex games. They are incestuous to the max. They are mother and daughter. Uh, the daughter talks about having sex with the father before he died and passed away. And then there's this weird scene where she's an adult woman having sex with a mummy corpse. And uh, it's very just, I don't know, it looks like real sex. I know it's simulated, but it looks like real sex. and It's just so crazy because you know... This is one of those scenes like I'm talking about where you know this is a delusion. Because she's not even in the right... You know, she's talking about being 11 years old and losing her virginity to her father. But then she's telling this story as a grown woman who's having sex with a mummy monster who's supposed to be her father. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's not totally real, right? It is disgusting. And the games that the mother and daughter play are even worse. It's hard to believe this is a movie from 1990. I didn't realize people were so kinky in 1990. <laughs> Of course, I was only 10 years old, so uh, that explains why I didn't know that. But, uh, yeah, they the mother has a strap on. They play these weird role-playing games where, you know, they've been murdering people for a while. Anybody who shows up at the house by accident, a lot of the servants, they've been playing these psychosexual games with them of torture, and they've killed several people. And uh, so they'll role-play these killings. They'll reenact them with each other, and they get off on this sexually there's like a power trip here between the mother and the daughter about which one is ultimately in charge of this game and um so then we have a detective who's been uh injured and he's 
looking for a woman named Laura. Now, Laura came to their house to apply for a job as a secretary, but the father was already dead, uh, and she didn't know that, and they invited her in, and of course they murdered her, and they have, they chopped her up, cut her up, put her body parts all over the kitchen. Uh, they're weird people. Uh, they don't even eat right. Like, they can't even eat food right. They they are so detached from from anything outside of the their mansion, right? They don't realize that they have no so, no social norms. And you see that when they're around this guy uh, initially. So he shows up at their house. He's been injured. He, you know, they're kind of surprised by him being there because nobody just shows up. And uh, when they do, they, you know, it's usually that's it for them. But they let him in and they're a little intrigued by why he's there and how he got there and why he would think that Laura came there in the first place. Somebody has told him something, right? Uh, But as he starts to fade, you know, he's got this uh, gunshot wound, basically, is what it is. And he starts to uh, fade off, and they decide to take care of him. But now, what they really mean by take care of him is they keep him strapped to a bed and feed him occasionally. And every now and then give him water, and then they just torture the shit out of him. I mean, they electrocute this guy. They play weird sex games with him. They make him participate in their actions and... They give him the name of Singapore Sling. Just a weird-ass name. They found a little card in his wallet, and they decide to name him Singapore Sling. So that's what they call him throughout the movie. And um, so from here, we see there's a little bit of intrigue with the mother and the uh, daughter. They start to turn on each other a little bit. And they start to not trust each other. Uh, The psychosis is starting to get to both of them. And they're, you know, turning on each other. And it... Ultimately, because they have not killed this guy yet, they're both starting to wonder why the other one hasn't done it or pushed it to that point. So they think there's a backup plan somewhere. They both think this about the other one. And we see that, you know, this poor guy, he gets tortured for about an hour of this movie. And finally, you know, they mess up. They start feeding him regularly and while they're making him do all this stuff. But he gets his strength back. And ultimately, he takes over the game. He becomes more and more involved in these sex games where he's a controller instead of just being subjective and um or subjected and um so then we see that you know i don't want to give away the end i don't know if you really can but uh yeah this there's some dissension within the ranks here between the mother and daughter and uh the way things go down at the end is not exactly what i expected but what are you going to expect from a film like this i thought it was a good ending for what it was there was only a few ways to end this and I thought it was a pretty interesting way that they chose to do it uh, the film is shocking and weird I would say more than graphically shocking as far as imagery it's just freaking weird man some of the stuff you see in this you're never going to forget and it's just so off the wall that <laughs> some of the stuff they do in these sex games is insane uh, there's a murder or a death in here uh, that involves penetration with a knife that's also very fucking weird. Just all kinds of stuff that's, you know, you won't forget it. I, I'm not going to say it's the most shocking thing you've ever seen in your life in one of these films, but you will not forget it. And so, oh, when it comes to this movie, you know, at first I, th- I just thought it was weird, guys. I watched the whole thing. It's like an hour and 40 or 50 minutes long, too. And I watched the whole thing, and I'm like, God, this is just weird. This whole thing is just weird. But then I realized about two-thirds of the way through it, I'm like, you watch the whole thing. You know, it kept you interested. You wanted to see where this was going. Ultimately, I think, or, uh, you know, you really want to see what happens with this guy, this detective. Is he going to survive this? Because it's a nightmare what he goes through. And, uh, you know, especially, I think, you know, as a man, he's also, it's more than just he's tortured and all this other stuff. He's also, like, horribly emasculated. Not that that's, a you know, something that you'll die from. It's just... Not something I expected to see in a film this old. Uh, the places it goes are very dark and very weird. And I'm not sure I've seen another film exactly like this one ever. That's for sure. So I'm going to give Singapore Sling. Guys, I'm going to give it 7.5 out of 10. I'm going to tell you right now. Here's the way this is going to work. You're going to love it or you're going to hate it. Right? There's not going to be a whole lot of in between on this one. I could tell you a score, but I'm just going to tell you this. If you like weird shit... This is going to be, like, next level for you. It's art house weird, which makes it twice as good as just being fucking weird, right? It also has a plot, which is unusual for art house weird movies. And it has a direction that it's going in. It has, you know, all these 
things that kind of basically make it a horror movie. The director said that he thought it was a comedy. He never, he never considered it to be a horror film until he put it out and people kept talking about how it was one of the most shocking films he'd ever seen or they'd ever seen. And then he said he started to wonder about himself. Like, was he sick or what? Because he just thought this was all a joke that nobody would take it seriously, you know. Uh, I don't know how he could have thought that personally because it, it does seem to go back and forth to me. There are times when it's so ridiculous that, yeah, I can see that he could be going for comedy, but there are all times where it's it's just uh, it's very shocking, and it's obvious that it was done for the you know purpose to shock people. There's no re- there's no way that you would shoot some of these scenes and be like, oh, that's normal everyday stuff and I see, that I see in every movie. Uh, but yeah. So I'm going to give it 7.5 out of 10, and that's just a, that score means nothing, guys. It means absolutely nothing, because like I said, if you love tremendously weird, crazy shit, you will love this movie. It will probably be one of your favorites of all time. If you hate crazy, weird movies, and you need something, like, if you like shock movies, but you just like the ones about the serial killers cutting people up, you don't want any, like, existential weird stuff, yeah, this is not for you. It's not for you in any sense of the word. But if you can make it through it, I think it's a decent watch. And I, I think it's a decent uh, viewing or watch, whatever you want to call it, to add to your catalog. Just for future reference, if anyone ever brings up this weird-ass movie, you'll be able to say, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Guys, that's all we got for today, and we'll talk to you the next time we got something worth talking about. Bye.